Our very first guest this year is the very talented Dr. Brady Klein, the head of digital learning at AIS. Brady has a PhD in educational leadership, has had an intriguing career where he's gone from a hotshot industry expert to a wonderful teaching career spanning across the globe. So without further ado, welcome along, Brady. Uh, thank you very much, Matt. It's great to be here with you. Just before we get started, can you give us a background prior to coming to AIS? Yeah, sure. I'd love to. Um, as you highlighted in the uh, in the intro, I have kind of been a globe trotter of sorts, and I think probably it's just worth starting at the beginning. Um, yeah. uh, back in the '90s, I uh, was you know dot com era, and I was fresh out of university and dumped into a, a great role leading a team of programmers and and all that stuff and driving a sports car and everything. But uh, I decided to have a midlife crisis and thought, you know what, I, I don't know if I want to do this. Uh, I have a friend that teaches uh, in Honduras at this tiny little school, and he's told me to come down and teach sixth grade with him. So I said, why not? I'll, I'll give it a go. Okay, well, this is a unit that we've just, we're just closing the door on. It was a very exciting unit. And we talked earlier about transdisciplinary learning. Now, the, the transdisciplinary learning is, is a way of teaching children to be able to make connections across what are traditionally single subject boundaries. So we, what we endeavour to do at the commencement of each year is we sit down as an art department or a specialist department and we'll sit down with each year um, classroom teacher cohort and say, what are you teaching this year and what sequence are you be, will you be teaching these big ideas? So we find out what they're teaching and then we thought, how can we introduce a, a unit where the children are going to be able to make these connections? Can you talk the audience through what's happening in, in this slide and talk about the inquiry going on? So, so mathematics is, is not just happening in the classroom. Mathematics is happening outside. So you can see uh, two students are outside when we looked at uh, measurement. They were uh, measuring um, the playground. Uh, it's it's hands-on. They're using concrete materials uh, that are engaging. They are fun. And it makes maths um, – and it helps our students to develop that sort of growth mindset, that can-do attitude. At times, our students think they are not good at maths or uh, I'm not strong at maths, but by making it fun and engaging, it, that, that engagement and that fun factor develops that, that growth mindset in their maths. I was looking at, we've got a beautiful little picture of the H and then we've got some cubes. Can you talk about the learning that's happening in these two? So, so Matt, that's a video that we can share shortly, but we are able to use a many digital technologies and right. we're able to share these digital technologies through our Seesaw, which is our parent portal. So parents can also see what's happening in the classroom in particular here with their uh, mathematical um, learning. Great to know about uh, respecting culture in infant care. So how diverse is the students' population? That's quite a nice one. Very, yeah. yes, very diverse. I am so right. lucky that one of my uh, staff, one, one of the teachers actually speaks a little bit of Korean because it's her passion because we have quite a few Korean babies this year, oh. some Japanese babies. We have um, <laughs> American, uh, Australian, of course. Oh, from everywhere. I, I will have a Polish baby very soon as well. So I will practice my own native language finally. Um, so it really from every part of the world. Uh, that, and I think that adds, so that's a good question because I think that answers if any parents from a different um, uh, ethnicity, different part of the world are saying, you know, how's their child going to be, are they going to, is uh, the only one? Right, because you might have that. A lot, a lot of people have that <clears throat> very big misconception. The Australian school, I'm thinking, is it just all Australian? And it couldn't we be. Welcome it's, everyone, it's, and I think it's it's not so much about the Australian citizenship or language mm -hmm. or accent, but it's more about that frame of mind, that lovely Australian, uh, you know, way of being. And it, when you come into the school, you will feel it. It's it's that atmosphere. It's I want to go on to this, this next slide here that you've got for us, because I think this is just, this ties together, like you say, those those six areas that you piece together in a beautiful, uh, lovely illustration that I'll let you describe to the audience. Yes. Well, I wish how they come 
better. credit for the illustration, but it's not mine. It's uh, by uh, Scarborough. And yeah, yeah. I think it really highlights the idea that reading is not a simple process. It is, it is quite complex. So um, if you can see at the thinner part of the rope there, that's where we want to get our students to be. And that's where you and I are right now. We're skilled readers. Um, but for children, if you look at the bottom one where it's around word recognition, it becomes, you've got the arrow, it becomes increasingly automatic. So over time, you know, children at the beginning, they'll start, it's, it's not very automatic. But you, you do yep. need to have a phonological awareness. Um, you need to be able to decode. So you need to know the alphabetic code, uh, knowing the sounds. Yes. Um, you need to have some stored sight words, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, and then on the same other end, you're working on that language comprehension the whole time. And that becomes increasingly strategic over time. So you can see that it's, there's a lot of things involved in reading, um, which just highlights why it's so important that we teach this skill explicitly.